This is Belizean Legends, and I'm Bilal Mars. Today, finally, we have in studio the revolutionary Belizean activist from the south of Punta Gorda in Belize, the head of the Belize Territorial Volunteers, Will Mihir. Brother Will Mihir visiting with us, a very short visit, and we want to get from Will Mihir finally the action on the Sarstoon, the culmination of Belize's territorial dispute with Guatemala. The actions of the Guatemalan military oligarchy in annexing the Sarstoon. Will Mihir comes to us here to brief us and to give us an understanding of what's going on on the Sarstoon, my brother yes. Will Mihir. Respect, man, respect, it's respect, quite respect, behind the brother. zinc fence. <laughs> respect. Yeah, you, man, man, you know, from yeah. behind the zinc fence, yes. the print radio That's and TV. Right. Yeah. The now on Belizean legends, my brother, and I just want Belizeans to know this is a legend. This is a legend. When we hear my brother, you know, we long awaited, we wanted to get you here, the organization, brother, and we wanted to talk with you to bring to us, man, to share with the world, you know, the aggression by the Guatemalan military oligarchy in the next in the Belize Arsenal River. And this whole aspect will because the last time we saw proactive action like that that you and BTV has done was through a Dinga Lamumba Belize action movement called BAM BAM. Yeah, remember that way back. And now here it is again where my brother will remember that image with you holding that flag in front of that Guatemala military kind of bomb. It just brings goosebumps over me when I talk about it. Really. Um, tell us about what's going on. Well, what's going on? First of all, respect, man, it's right. you. Thanks for having me over here in Italy. I've been hearing about the studio and um, about you for a long time. You know, of course, we have a deep connection with the Zinc and yeah, Van Excite and Bose and all those guys. So, don't worry. Um, but yeah, definitely Belizeans in LA. It's a pleasure for me to be here, coming all the way from the south. And you know, I just want to say how grateful that we are in Belize for the support that we get from the diaspora. At the end of the day, um, the diaspora is very, very important. And at no time should anybody in the diaspora think that they are separate from Belize because we are all Belizeans, one Belizeans. It don't matter what part of the world that you live. We are Belizeans, and you should have every right. Um, whether you live inside Belize or outside of Belize, once you're a Belizean, you should have every right, like every Belizean. We should have, like, you know, the American rights of Belizeans and Belizean rights of Belizeans. No, 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 no. One because, right. yeah, and that's why, you know, I expect that all Belizeans living out here in the diaspora to become even more active. I mean, when you guys organized that protest going up by the Guatemalan Embassy, you know, that was something, you know, and I, I just hope that, you know, that momentum keep on going because at the end of the day, this is what we have. We have eight, eight, six, seven square miles, and we cannot allow anybody not from square, anywhere, square inch. not a square inch, not a grain of sand, not a blade yes. of grass, not a mangrove leaf, to be taken by the enemy. Yes. And like, you know, one of the things that I want people to understand that we Belizeans with the Guatemalan people, we have a really good relationship, and it's the Guatemalan oligarchy, the military that have a problem with Belizeans because people to people, we get along just fine. You know, but it's that one percent that owns ninety percent of the land in Guatemala that is greedy and want more land, and they see the pasture is greener on the Belize side. So that said, it is up to us, all of us Belizeans, to demand that our government get it right. It doesn't matter who is in government, if it's PUP, UDP, or BPP, that whoever is governing the people of Belize that day get it right. Um, you know, and what we are saying is that we cannot continue to have people like Sidney Ellington disrespecting the Belizean people and basically giving Guatemala ammunition to take to the ICJ and that's why we cannot afford to go to the ICJ when he as the foreign minister will get up and say we don't know where our borders are borders that's, are artificial you know and yeah. you know the fishermen don't know when they're in Belize or Guatemala mm -hmm. when we got independence in 1981 yeah. right I know that treaty was drafted in 1859, and that's why I bring my shirt beautiful, today. Beautiful, right there, yeah. the beautiful 1859 treaty. Right? That's what we go by. Yeah, that's what we go by. I mean, that line was drawn. There's a straight line between Gracias Dios and Garbas Falls and Garbas Falls and Aguas Turbes. 
there's like how can you like mistake that right and the law of the sea the united nations law which says that you have you could claim the 12 miles from your shoreline i mean how can we like just make some ridiculous statements how can say make ridiculous statements saying that they, we don't our borders are not defined when we got our independence you know every member state of the united nations recognized our independence with all its territory in fact so I mean, you know, it's yes, yes. horrible to hear you speak yeah. truth to power. And, you know, you could go on and I know you could speak volumes about this crisis, about this cause, this struggle that Belizeans have been fighting for since my grandmother, 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 yeah. you know, um, for, 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 for centuries, for decades, Will. And I know you don't speak when it says Belizeans, they have one phrase and it says, when fish come from a river bottom and tell it that's up. That's all. That's all. Yeah. And here you are, the Belizean diaspora, the only in here in Los Angeles, the Belizean Los Angeles community, who is the largest Belizean community outside of Belize, the largest in diaspora. Will be here is here to tell you this is a man that has lived all his life, born and grow in the South. That is a man that has been on there confronting the Guatemalan military oligarchy. He's telling you as it is. This is this is the livest you can get it. Life is that you can get it. I can't think you can get it any better than that. We don't even want to talk about that whole ICJ thing because they are, here they are right now and they're pushing their propaganda, the government that is of that country, in terms of trying to get the Belizean people to, I, I call it intoxicate them. Yes. To, 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 or, or to let them, uh, uh, um, to, to let them try to believe that going to the ICJ is the only option that is there. Yeah. What is there else will be here? that we hear Patrick Rogers and so on from the Belize uh, Progressive, Progressive Party, Party talks yeah. about that the United Nations Security Council yeah. is another option. Yeah. Talk about yeah. that. There are, there are so many things that we could do. Like never once has the government of Belize consulted the people living on the borderline that deal with this day to day. You have brothers like Darius Avila who basically every year has brought these three countries together. Guatemala, Honduras and Belize wow. in yeah. harmony. Right, you have the Mayan people who have Maya Day in PG. Yes. Um, almost every month, there is some activity that brings the cultures together. And no, at not one time that the foreign minister have taken an interest or anybody in the government to say, okay, well, people living on the border, let's see how we could solve this peacefully. We have a great relationship, people to people in the border, but it's that one person of Guatemala who is dictating mm. the fact that they want that greenery that they see in Belize yeah. and we have a government that's facilitating that. Yeah. I mean, so that's just one yeah, That's why they say they right. have a one percent chance that yeah. they could win. Yeah. <laughs> because it's you the one percent that represents that, them. Exactly. Yes. And you know, the thing is that going to the ICJ is definitely not a way. Yeah. I always remember when, you remember when Sharon Matola very much was fighting the Chalio Dam. Yes, the lady and from the Belize Zoo. Exactly, and yes. she had top-notch lawyers. Bobby Kennedy yes. came to Belize. Top-notch lawyers from England came mm. to Belize and said, "Don't worry, take it to the Privy Council mm. that you got a winning case." Yes, and yes. when they walked out of there, she lost the case. She lost the case. Right. So there's no the guarantee yes. of what those judges will be thinking very of when much, they go. The people who agree that we go to the ICJ are the people who are willing to give up a part of the lease. I am not willing to give up a Like part they have of given up before. The, yes. the Maritime Heroes Act, well, yeah. you remember that I remember very much. That. I was yeah. there and they took me out in a skiff. Yeah. Gregor Aleman. Yes. You remember the I great remember, senator yeah. Gregor Aleman, legendary yeah. brother. Yeah. And see, he says, Bilal, we used to go that far and you can't go, you yes. can't go that far yes. and give away all yeah. of that. You see? see? The fisherman, they tell me that we yeah. as a boss, we used to catch the biggest fishes out there. Yeah. Now we can't go to Guatemala and go and go chase with that Yes, team. Exactly. You see? And and then after Belize, under that, PUDP administration gave up mm -hmm. that nine miles of seas. Wow. The, the claim is still there. And we keep giving they concessions, Will. Keep, Why we keep exactly. giving concessions now? So there's no guarantee that even if we go to court and win that, okay, they give them from Barranco down or from Moho or from Cebu now, mm -hmm. right? That the Guatemalans will be satisfied with that. They will never be satisfied until they get all, all of it. Because they so, say they claim they yeah. all and no half. Yeah. Right? And then when Sedu is going to make his quick first thing that comes out of his mouth, oh, well, look at their military might. That should not fade us. Yes. You know, we cannot be in That's a cop out. Yeah, that's, that's a, a cop out. Yes. You know, and what we need to do, I have people 
in the Maya villages right now that's willing to keep our borderline clean and clear. Right? But we don't have the will from the government. And you have done it though, Wilmina. Yes. You have taken the BTV. Yeah. We have seen what you have erected along with the, the uh, Orlando De La Fuentes. Fuentes, the brothers yeah. from Orange Walk. You have brought that whole group together. They have established the borderlines with markers and there, there is a borderline. There is a borderline. There is no adjacent to yeah. zones. Yeah. There is a borderline. Yeah. Yeah. And and we have that borderline established from the 1859 exactly. treaty. Um, the question is asked, did, is this for Mesa, did he even go on the borderline? Does he even see what it's yeah. all about? Like you have, my if brother. You, if, if you look at the foreign minister and every time people ask him, have you ever been to the borderline? Oh, I've been to Punta Gorda. That's yeah. not the borderline. That's not the borderline. It out every time. That's right. You know, That's at least right. I could remember. And, you know, so this this is something like you we were talking earlier about from, from, um, Bam days, yes. Belize action Belize movement, action day. movement. Yes. from those days when you know Belizeans were a little more militant. I was saying yes. those days, Indeed. Indeed. but from then I've been involved. I mean, I actually I have pictures that could show you where Manuel Esquivel he flew into Gracias a Dios, and I picked him up there in a boat, brought him oh, down oh. the Star Stone River. Took him there. Yes, Look brought him down the Star Stone River. Attention. Brought him, this, <laughs> river, brought him back to BG. So yeah. I mean, from those days that yeah. we're active with this. And when the British were there, we didn't have no kind of incursions. Yeah. But now that we have a weak government yeah. that's trying to be accommodating to Guatemala, yeah. that we are having all these incursions, but we don't have to have these incursions. You know, like physically again, as you know, like I have to, I established Tide and the Port of the Rest Marine much, Reserve. Very much. And Excellent, brother. Lots of Guatemalans used to be camping in there. And we did we have a government that was not willing to evict them from there. And we went in there and every night we pick up their nets and we cut it up until they left. And that's what we need to do as Belizeans. When in the Chiki Bowl, we mm -hmm. can get rid of them. Yeah. They already broke the law. Mm -hmm. They cut down our forest inside a national park, plant their corn. And no, we have to give them a chance to reap their corn. Let me yeah. tell you something, brother. No Guatemalan will starve to death mm -hmm. if we kick them out of the Chiki Bowl. Yeah, so they have so, never been and they will you know, never win. So we yes. could kick them out of the Chiki Bowl. Yes. But we need to have that political will. The minute they plant the corn, we cut it down. Yes. The minute we see them, we evict them and take all their yeah, materials. Right. Let me hear you speak know? about the fact that when you were growing up, there used to be like 10 miles of forest that you used to could walk and see. Yes. Remember you wrote one yeah. time. And now you have, you have become a grown man now today and you look and you say, man, I used to could walk all the way. Yeah. And now all that has been been, I, been deforested yeah, by I, Guatemalan um, um, cultures yeah. and campesinos coming from across uh, on Belizean territory. And, and these are not no Guatemalan Mayans and we need to make that clear. Very much. Like make that say, point. Oh, well, it's the poor Mayas. It's not uh, the poor Mayas. Yes, when yeah. you look at the land clearing that is taking place in Belize right now, it's these rich Guatemalans yes. from Guatemala City who wants to escape to some place serene yes. on the weekends. Yes. And those are the ones who they pay the Mayas to do the initial clearing, yeah, then they out. come in. Keep I mean, 10 years ago mm -hmm. or 15 years ago, I could hike from Pueblo Viejo all the way down to the borderline without the sun hitting me. Sentinel now it is nothing but pasture lands. And though, like again, I'm pointing out that those pasture lands, they're not owned by Maya people. Yeah, they're right. owned by wealthy. rich, wealthy yeah, European yeah, what, descendants, yeah, Guatemalans, yeah, Guatemalans, you know? Wow. And this is what yes. we have to do. We have to make yes. sure that we maintain. And Belizeans, you live in here in the States, in LA and everywhere, write to the Prime Minister. The more letter he gets written to him, demand a return re a removal. Demand that they do something like that because then they get the sense. Of, well, that is a very right? important the, the, the point to underscore there. We yeah. must have that removal of that foreign minister if he's not serving in the capacity from a position of strength in bargaining, negotiating for Belize's strength in, in, its, in its territorial and its sovereignty. The Guatemalan military oligarchy is backed up by Israel and it is backed up by the United States government. Those are two powerful forces now. If you and, and you cannot have, as we say in Kikuyo language, call no a weak fence. Yeah, exactly. They have seen a weak fence and they are now manipulating that that the friends of the friends of Belize, all of these yeah. forces. Who are those huh? friends of Belize? If you are friends of Belize who recognize our independence, you will demand that Guatemala respect our borderline. Yes, very much. Very, very, very much. My brother, you you your time is very short with me here. You um, we just want to just get you to cover 
um, some more pertinent points in terms of the whole action. We saw the annexation of the SARS-2 and a lot of people said, oh, the, the SARS-2 is not annexed. They have not taken it over. He would Piper's Bird explain that it's uh, kind of law what they do when they take it and then when they go to the ICJ they can say okay we have it now and that the court could poss possibly give it to them. Yeah. They are trying to, he, he called it a certain term, I can't remember what it is. Talk about that annexation of yeah. that SARS. Well, is it true Will, that the, the SARS food has been annexed? If you have your yard right out here, right, and you can't go in there because your neighbor has taken your yard, mm -hmm. your neighbor has annexed your yard and that's what, what happened to the SARS food. Whenever we go to the Sarsoon, we are followed by the Guatemalan military. You know, before 2015, for over a hundred years, the Guatemalans have had a claim for Belize. But they have never, ever crossed that line and occupied Belize. Since 2015, they started occupying Belize. That is so Belize. true. You know, and this is one thing Historically, that Belizeans, it has never happened yeah, before. Yeah, Belizeans need to realize this, that before 2015, they always say, well, Belize that we, Belize that we, but they have never system. crossed over yeah. and planted their flag or bring their boats over there, but now they are doing that. And up to now, our foreign minister, our prime minister, have refused to complain to the United Nations Security Council, which is, that is why the UN Security Council is there, to bring awareness yes. to these this bullying by Guatemala. Right. That's what we, we use to get our independence. Yeah. And, and we, we have, got it. Yeah, and we have never done yeah. that. So Belize, yeah. if they are serious, they could at least file a complaint to the United Nations that the Guatemalans continue to invade our territory. As uh, recently as a couple of weeks ago, I was in the Sarsun, and they came over right in front of the foreign well, well. You know, yeah. we went up there, we took the media houses when they had that little oil spill in Guatemala. Very much so. right? right? Took the media houses, and the minute we got on the Sarsun, the Guatemalan military followed us and they came on the Belize side to show us. Now that right there was ground enough for the Belize government to protest to the United Nations Security Council and say, hey, this, got, this bullying got to stop. It's got to stop. And they haven't done that. So Belizeans, you who live here in America, you, have, you, you can do a lot. Right to the Prime Minister, Demand that he remove Ellington. Demand that they do something to the United Nations Security Council. That they file a complaint to the United Nations Security Council. Write their congressman and says, look, you know, you, United States taxpayers money. When I was going in 2015, I got a call from the United States Embassy people, right? Who told me, well, Mejia, don't go to the Sarah Stewart. Right? So you know they know what's going on. And I said, look, yes. you can't tell me not to go to the SARS school. Yes. You know, I remember this guy from the United States Embassy who called me. I told him, I know that we're a child of time, but I want to tell you the story. He's the so he was a brother, brother. right? Yeah. Uh, African American, and, uh, right? Yes. He was a political attaché, yes. political and military attaché. Yes. And he says, you can't go. I'm, I'm begging you not to go. Don't go. You've proven your point. Yes. I said to him, you know what, Rosa Parks? If she, oh, didn't, same thing. if she didn't get up from <laughs> yes. the back of the bus and go to the front of the bus, you right now, brother, would have still been in the back yeah, of the bus. Exactly. So you're not going to you tell me. You put it right yeah. back in his lap. You're not going yeah. to tell me. Very I can't much. So you brought it home back to him. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, very, again, very much. Yeah. Belizeans, I just want to say, like, look, I'm happy for the opportunity. My brother. My brother, we're here. here. And we're going to say this is part one of what we're here. His trip is very short. We'll hopefully get Will Mejia back again, hopefully for a big tour meeting here in Los Angeles in the near future, so that he can explain to the Belizean people here in Los Angeles all that they need to know, and they could ask him questions, and we could get a better understanding. But Belizeans, as he said, you need to be proactive here. You need to uh, lobby your, 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 your representatives in Washington, people like Congresswoman Karen Bass, people like Maxine Waters, that can bring extreme pressure on the Guatemalan military oligarchy through the United States government to lay off its pressure off Belize, to, re to, to relinquish its claim of Belize. Since, since, since way back in 1948, it needs to, 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 to step back. And Will Mejia comes to us here in this short visit to give us from the ground standpoint, from what's happening there, a man that has been involved every day with this issue. All the Belizeans, if you're coming to Belize for this year's 2017 September celebration, I'm inviting you down to Barranco Village on the 16th of September where we'll be having many excursions to the Sarstoon. 
to the island itself. We'll have a canoe race and a kayaking race. It's going to be a um, family day. Uh, we'll have bands and we'll have a lot of kayaking and canoeing. And if you're coming down there, I invite you. The road is in good condition right now. Come down to Barranco, September 16th. It's a Saturday. And you will see firsthand what's going on on the borderline. Thank you very much again, my brother. Yeah, thanks for coming in, my brother. Yes. This is Belizean Legends. I am Bilal Morris, and we were speaking with the legendary Belizean activists of today from the Belize Territorial Volunteer, from the Belize Progressive Party, Will Meher of the southern city of Punta Gorda in the Toledo district.